All right, in this quick video, we're just gonna go over the differences between the combo panel and the red near infrared. The combo meaning it also has blue as well as red near infrared, where the red near infrared does not have the blue. The reason why I wanted to put blue in is because it's so beneficial for a number of things, whether that's skin issues such as acne, psoriasis, eczema. It's also very good for the skin as far as increasing the tone, increasing collagen as well. It's also very good for things like hair loss, uh, but more importantly, it's great for balancing circadian rhythm, uh, particularly for those people dealing with depression, anxiety. Now, you'd ask yourself, why wouldn't I just get the one with the blue in it as well? Well, in order to put blue in, we've got to steal some of the power from the red and near infrared. It's not a lot. It's only about 15%. So whatever power is in this, we're just going to minus that in the red and near infrared when we add the blue onto that. So when we talk about irradiance, that's basically the, the power over um, a certain area, milliwatts per centimeter squared. So what I do first thing in the morning is I will sit in front of my panel and I will have blue, red, near infrared on, and I'll have it pulsing at 40 hertz, which is the best for your brain health. And it's been shown that blue light, as well as red and near infrared, pulsing at 40 is good for reducing inflammation, reducing amyloid plaque in the brain, and, and I, I would be sure it has some very preventative uh, effects as well. So when I measure irradiance, we can use different types of meters. Most companies are using a solar meter. A solar meter is gonna give a higher number than say a laser meter or a spectrometer. So if I'm reading somewhere around 70 milliwatts at 12 inches away, if I use a, a solar meter, that number is gonna be higher. So you always have to keep that in mind when you're looking at uh, different companies and what their measurements are. Most importantly is our body likes a certain amount of power over time. So a lot of times we hear, oh, it's this powerful. We don't need something super powerful, right? We don't need something that's 150, 200 plus milliwatts. It's not gonna do our body any good. What we want is around 50 milliwatts of power over a certain amount of time. And that's around 15 minutes at 12 inches away from either panel. So when I turn this on, I'm gonna to go to mode. Mode one is going to be blue only. Mode two is red and near infrared only. Mode three is gonna be blue, red, and near infrared. Now I can go ahead and I can change the time. I can change the pulses as well. When I go over to the red and near infrared, Mode one is gonna be red only. Mode two is gonna be near infrared only. And mode three is gonna be red and near infrared together. In both of these, I have the near infrared as dominant. So on the red and near infrared, I have three chips in every bulb. Two of them are 810 and one of them is either the 620 or the 670. So that way I'm dedicating 67% of the energy to near infrared, which is more important because it takes longer to penetrate deeper into the body. I don't need a lot of red uh, simply because red is only gonna penetrate skin deep. It's gonna be saturating those cells in a much shorter time than red. So there's no point in having this like a typical panel where I have 50% red 50% near infrared because then I'm just wasting a lot of that red light energy. On the blue, although it is still near infrared dominant, it's a little bit less. So the blue has very low power and that's for a good reason because we don't need a whole lot because it's not even going to penetrate skin deep. It has a lot of its benefits just on the surface of the skin, which is where we need it. And it's going to be very effective uh, visually through the eyes. Uh, the red is also slightly decreased and the near infrared is a little bit higher power than the other two. So in every bulb, we've got a blue, a red, and a near infrared. Okay, so when we talk about beam angle, 
and we're talking about more focused light. What that means is if I'm 12 inches away from this panel and I'm at about 70 milliwatts per centimeter squared of power, if I move myself back six inches to 18 inches, usually you're gonna drop about 50% in power, which is quite a bit. With a 30 degree beam angle, I'm only dropping from 70 to about 65 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So I'm only losing about 10% of energy by moving further back. That allows me to get more body area, but that also allows me just to be able to stand more comfortably where I don't have to be so close to a panel like many other companies, they re uh, recommend you stand six inches away, which for a lot of people is just too close to you. Also, you have different protrusions of the body. So if I'm right here, my, my nose may be six inches, but my neck may be 10 inches. So again, we're, we're getting different measurements of light when we have such a beam angle, but if I'm able to put myself further back, I'm getting more consistent light and I'm getting a much higher energy than I would with other devices that had either a 60 or a 90 degree beam angle.